Hello, this is Cameron Goldie-Scott and I'm here to take you through how to configure a loan product in the Missoni system. To start off, you just go to Configuration and click on Products. And because we're creating a new loan product, I'm going to click Create Loan Product here. And this takes me to the Create Loan Product workflow, as you can see across the top. We'll start off by entering the name of our product. We'll give it a short name and a description as well. A lot of organizations get grant funding or funding for their loans from other places like Kiva or MasterCard or other funds. Uh, and here you can specify which fund uh, is used to fund this particular product. And so we'll say that this is coming from Kiva. We can select the currency. And then using the decimal places, we can work out or configure how many decimal places we would like the loan installments uh, to, be, uh, well, to be applied. So if we select two there, every loan installment will be calculated to the nearest two decimal places. Because we're using Kenyan shilling, we'll just select one. The in multiples of can be used to specify for any loan installment, is it rounded to the nearest multiple of 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 50, whatever you might be. Uh, and this is very useful if you're dealing with, with very large currencies where people might not have very small change. So if someone doesn't want to repay 952 shillings every week and it would be much easier for them to repay 1,000 then you can round to the nearest multiple of a thousand and the system will do that automatically for you on the loan repayment schedule. We can now select the minimum and maximum principle for our product so I'm going to start off with a minimum principle of 5,000 shillings and a maximum of 500,000 shillings. We can also specify a default which is just pre-filled for any user who's giving a client a loan and they can edit the default within the minimum and maximum that you've set up. This is going to be a weekly loan so I'm going to set one week as my repayment frequency and I'm going to say a default of 12, a minimum of 12 weeks and a maximum of 52 weeks so one year. If any of these fields are confusing or you're looking for more guidance on what to enter you can just click on the little I and it gives you a bit more information on what you should actually enter in this field and how the field will then be applied to the product. Under interest rate, we can set a minimum interest rate of 15 and a maximum of 18, and we'll keep the default of 15. This could either be 15% per month or per year, and we'll go with per year. We can set up grace periods on this product, and I'm just gonna enter a grace period of uh, one for both principal and interest, but no grace period on interest charged. This means that the client won't have to repay anything on their first instalment, um, but interest will be calculated over the time period of the first instalment. If I would like this to be flexible and allow a user when giving a client a loan to be able to edit it, then I can select this box here. And if I would like it to be fixed just for this product, I'll leave it blank. Under the interest methodology, I can select either a flat or declining balance methodology. And I'm gonna go with a declining balance. When I select declining balance, I then have the option to determine whether the, in, whether the repayment schedule is fixed at the time of disbursement or whether it's flexible. And if I select yes for interest recalculation, this means that the repayment schedule is flexible. And if a client repays early or late, then the amount of interest due on that loan will be automatically recalculated by the system. I can determine that the rules around this automatic calculation now. So I'm gonna say that the recalculation is gonna compound on just the principal, so not on fees or interest or anything like that. And when a client repays early, the loan schedule will be well rescheduled and I, I would like it to reduce the installment amounts of subsequent installments. But I could also reduce the number of installments or reschedule the next payment if I so chose. For a declining balance loan, I have to pick the amortization method, whether or not the loan installments are amortized so that all of them are equal, or whether or not we work with equal principal payments which means that the client will pay a little bit less each time as the amount of principal outstanding decreases over the loan term. And we'll go with equal instalments. I can pick the interest calculation period type either as daily or same as repayment period. If I select daily, then the interest is calculated over the exact number of days in, uh, over the loan term. And if I select same as repayment period, um, then it just looks at the number, well, the actual fixed loan term. So for example, if I have a three-month loan um, over February, there are only 28 days in February. 
So a three-month loan given out over February will uh, incur a little bit less interest than a three-month loan given out at any other time of the year. If you select the same as repayment period, the amount of interest charged on the loan will be exactly the same regardless of when you give it out. If you select daily, then it'll vary based on the number of days. You can select the number of days in a year, and we'll just go with 360, and the transaction processing strategy allows us to determine the order in which incoming payments are allocated between penalties, fees, interest, and principal, and we'll just go with the market standard. If I would like this loan to count towards a client's increasing loan cycles, then I can just include it in the loan cycle count there by clicking yes. And I'm happy now with all of my basic product configuration, so I'll click next and decide if I want to add any charges to this loan. I would like to add a disbursement charge, which I've pre-configured already, so I'll just add it to the product there. You can pre-configure all of your charges by going to charges up here, and we'll do that in another tutorial another day. I've added my charge, so I'll click next and decide which credit checks I would like the system to automatically apply before dispersing or approving the loan. I would definitely like it to give me a warning if the client's in arrears. I'd like a warning as well if the group is in arrears. I would like also the loan not to be allowed, so completely blocked, if the client's had a written off loan before. And these are just some of the controls the system will automatically apply. You can configure which controls you would like to apply and their severity level by clicking on credit checks up here. I'm now just gonna jump into the accounting by clicking next. And for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna go for a cash-based accounting methodology for this product, but I could do accruals if I wanted. Now I just have to link the different GLs in the system, which I've already pre-configured by going to accounting chart of accounts to the different actions linked to this product. So for the fund source, which is the account that, uh, that's credited when the loan is dispersed and debited when the repayment is made, as you can see on the little I, I'll select the bank account for loan portfolio. I'll select group loans. The transfer account is a control account used for transferring funds between loans and savings. Overpayments, so I'll select loan overpayments. It's a liability account when a client fully overpays their loan. And now all my income accounts, I'll just select the various income accounts I've already pre-configured. Finally, my expenses account, my write-offs, I'll just link the losses written off to the write-offs account. And that's pretty much it. That's the basic accounting set up for this product. We're actually gonna look at one advanced accounting rule though, which is I, I have people repaying both with checks and cash, but also over mobile money. And I would like the different payment channels to be linked to different fund sources. So to do this, I'm gonna click on the advanced accounting rules here. I'm gonna click add. And I'm gonna say, okay, well for cash, I would like this to be linked to bank account. For check, I'd also like it to be linked to bank account. And finally for m -Pesa, Instead of bank account, I'd like to link it to my m -Pesa GL. And these rules here override anything we've already configured on the product. So when a payment comes in over m -Pesa or mobile money, then it gets booked into this GL, which makes it easier for me to do my third party reconciliation. I'm happy with my accounting, so I'm gonna click next. And I'm just gonna create a quick short code for this. The product is called a super loan, so I'll call it SL. And this short code is used by the system when allocating mobile money payments coming in and it's used to distinguish between the different products a client might have. So if they had a loan and a savings product and they wanted just to repay into their loan, then they would enter the shortcode SL. Finally, I get taken to the overview, and here I can just see all of the information I've entered for my loan. And if I'm happy with it all, then I can click save at the end. And that's it, the product is now saved. You can see it in this list of loan products already in the system here. Just by searching for it, I can see the super loan, the best loan for business, just there. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. I hope you found this video useful.